WCBI News at 6 starts now. Good evening, everyone. Thousands of Mississippi first responders will soon receive help from legislation that will go into effect in a few weeks. Our Riley Livingston talks with emergency crews about the challenges they face on calls and long after. That's why this one bill could change things. She joins us in the studio with more. Responders risk their lives to keep us safe. Now they are getting a lifeline from state lawmakers. Every day, first responders put themselves in life-threatening situations. From fires to shootings, each call comes with its own risks. But there are other risks, dangers that aren't noticed immediately and may not come to light until long after the incident has passed. Firefighters especially are more likely to, to be diagnosed with cancer over any other career field that, out there. Uh, law enforcement as well, uh, due to their work with uh, radars and this, that, and the other. So cancer is very, uh, cancer rate is very high among first responders. The Mississippi First Responders Health and Safety Act is looking to ease some of the burden of that fight. If a firefighter or police officer has 10 or more years on the job, they can qualify for added benefits. In the event that a firefighter is diagnosed with cancer, there, there will be some type of financial backing there for them. Several neighboring states already provide similar benefits. Mississippi was one of the few states in the United States that did not have that in place. And uh, to get it finally in place and get the groundwork laid down is huge for us. So we are not last in getting a, the First Responder Health and Safety Act in place. Deputy Fire Chief Robert Hutto pushed hard for the act. My family has a high history of cancer to start with. And then I decided to jump into a career t over 10 years ago that put me where I'm being exposed to carcinogens and cancer-causing chemicals on a daily basis. So with my family history and how I know that cancer can affect a family, I, I really wanted to be one of the main ones, well, one of the ones to push it. Benefits will help up to $50,000. Captain Kenny Wilson says he appreciates their hard work being recognized. Yeah, I've been in the service for close to 30 years, and we get in some hazardous environments, and it means a lot to know that people will stand behind you, and it'll mean a lot to my family if something does happen. Hutto tells us the bill will take about two years to go into effect. By then, funding should be in place to begin payouts. A national restaurant chain serves up life-saving equipment to the Louisville Fire Department. Firehouse Subs Public Safety Foundation gave firefighters a new jaws of life today. The equipment will help firemen rescue victims from car accidents and other wreckage faster and more safely. Firehouse Subs says giving back to fire departments is part of their mission. It's part of our heritage. Uh, we were founded by firemen. Through their experience, they know that there's not a single department that, de that doesn't have a piece of equipment that they need that they don't have funding for. So we try to fill in those gaps. And it would give us an extra set of jaws on both trucks. And one truck would happen to be on another call and we get another one. We can't respond with, uh, on our new uh, engine too. Firehouse Subs has also helped out departments in West Point, Columbus, and Starkville. A local, state, and federal law enforcement partnership is combating human trafficking in North Mississippi. Yeah, Allie Martin has more on the task force's goals and strategies. So, you know, this is the kickoff and the celebration for the formation of the Northeast Mississippi Human Trafficking Task Force. As executive director for Mississippi's Center for Violence Prevention, Sandy Middleton works with victims of human trafficking. She says the cases are complex and call for cooperation among all levels of law enforcement and victim service providers. If law enforcement encounters a victim but they don't have anywhere to take that victim or anything, any tools to offer that victim any services, then it's difficult to make a case. And with the same token, we can find victims all day long, but until we're able to stop that behavior and stop that, that crime, then, then we can't move forward either. Officers from across the region will share information and resources to protect victims, prosecute offenders, and prevent human trafficking. And no matter the city or county, officers say human trafficking and its impact is felt all throughout Northeast Mississippi. If you have just one case, it's, it's too much, you know. 
Uh, but it's something that's being brought to the forefront, and we're really grateful to be part of this task force. It's everywhere. And uh, again, the, the public is generally naive to the fact that such things go on right here, you know, at our doorstep. And our goal is to, let's, like Barney said, nip this in the bud. And hopefully we can do that through this task force. The Center for Violence Prevention will hold education and awareness events for task force members and others involved in the fight to stop human trafficking. In Tupelo, Ali Martin, WCBI News. There are now four human trafficking task forces in Mississippi. Time now to turn things over to Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson with a first look at our forecast. Keith. Joy, some threatening clouds out there in downtown Columbus, but in general, not really a lot of action going on. That's a live view with our off insurance camera. You can see some spotty downpours, one moving through Starkville right now, one south of Macon. That's really just about it. Most of the heavy activity now shifting away from our area. Temperatures are currently very warm in the low and mid 80s, warm and steamy, but Isolated showers are fading away, so most of the evening is looking pretty good. In most spots, we fall back down into the 70s. Another chance for more storms tomorrow and tomorrow night. Some of those could be strong, especially later in the day. Your full forecast is coming up. Starkville leaders are wasting no time getting the ball rolling on plans for a new sports facility and improvement to existing parks. A recently passed 1% hotel and restaurant tax will make those plans a reality, but there's some paperwork to do before dirt work can begin. Tonight, the mayor and board of aldermen are expected to start the first phase of the proposal. Our Jory Talley joins us live in the studio with more on this story. Jory. Before they can start work, city leaders and builders need to know what they're working with. That's why they're moving forward with a survey to get the lay of the land. City leaders in Startful are laying the groundwork to build a new tournament facility and improve their current parks. This is the first step the board has taken. We obviously have been uh, you know, having conversations with some of our consultants and that sort of thing, but in terms of board action, this is going to be the first action that we will have taken. A survey of the city sportsplex, McKee Park, and the future site of Cornerstone Park is that first step. The surveying work again is just the um, the infield work that has to be brought back and put into drawings and then and then to take that and convert it into something that could happen, yeah, it could definitely take some time. To make sure our fields have proper drainage so that we don't have issues once we get the grass in and once we get the uh, turf in and just, you know, making sure that it's right. And that requires some technical exper expertise that I certainly don't have. So, you know, um, and more than just somebody out there on a bulldozer. So we need that engineering work done. Starpool's assistant city engineer, Cody Burnett, says the study should help head off potential problems down the road. Issues with drainage, um, the quality of the streets you get, those type of things. And so planning ahead of time gives you a good vision of what it will look like and sure you can't get it perfect every time, but you can get really close. Mm -hmm. And so it would just uh, provide a factor of safety to the taxpayers and the people using the park in the future. Improved parks and new recreation opportunities were part of Mayor Lynn Sproul's platform when she was elected two years ago. She says it's wonderful to see it all becoming a reality, and she thanks the voters who made it possible. This element to a park, uh, improving what we have and doing this sports tournament facility so that we can have wonderful recreation activities for our kids during the week and then attract people from all over the state on the weekend. Neil Schaefer will do the survey and it's expected to cost around $32,000. Ballots for the August primaries are delivered to circuit clerks across uh, Mississippi. The Secretary of State's office pushed ballots out to all counties to help circuit clerks get prepared for the August 6th races. Secretary of State Delbert Hoseman says there are some voting rules you need to know before casting a ballot. You have to vote in one primary or another. You have to either vote on the Democratic side or the Republican side. And we always get questions, oh, I want to vote for this Democrat and I want to vote for this Republican. Well, under Mississippi law, you can't do that. you got to pick one side or the other. You only have 30 days before the election to register. His office expects a solid turnout in August. A national leader in public health makes a recruiting stop in North Mississippi. We have more on how you could get involved when we come back. 
The nation's leading school of public health is looking for people who want to make a difference in communities across the country. The Bloomberg American Health Initiative and Hopkins, John, Johns Hopkins University, that is, stopped by Tupelo's Link Center today to explain a unique scholarship program. The Bloomberg Fellows Program will provide a full tuition scholarship for a Master of Public Health degree from Johns Hopkins. Candidates must be working in areas like addiction and overdose, obesity and food systems and adolescent health. Thinking about how do you address these issues from a public health space, and that's what we're hoping to do by training individuals in these non-traditional spaces to think about the way they do their work in a different way, uh, using the tools of public health. The program will provide full tuition scholarships for 50 students each year. You can get more information on our website, WCBI.com. A busy Monroe County bridge is shut down. Now some drivers could face a 25-mile detour. County supervisors were ordered to temporarily close the Butahatchee River Bridge. That popular swimming spot is on the Bartahatchee Road just northeast of Hamilton. The Federal Highway Administration and the Office of State Aid Road and Bridge called for the closing. County Road Manager Sonny Clay says three steel pilings under the bridge need work. The bridge was inspected at least six months ago, but the notice was delivered yesterday. Clay says the county will have to hire someone to make the repairs. No completion date has been set. Right now in Tupelo, about 80 degrees, fairly overcast at the current time, but overall showers on the way out right now, but we may see some stronger storms in the region tomorrow afternoon and really tomorrow night. More on that after the break. CBI First Alert AccuWeather Forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. Tropical showers out there today, ominous looking clouds. That's our time lapse from Durham's Pharmacy this afternoon in Vernon, but still some sunshine squeezed on in. Currently, we have temperatures ranging from the upper 70s in Starkville. You just had a pretty good downpour move on through, still some residual rain. Most spots, though, still in the lower 80s. Let's just do a little radar tour. One little downpour southeast of Macon in Knoxby County, right over Paulette. Are raining pretty good right now. No lightning or thunder being detected with that. And there's the dying shower moving through Starkville, but that's really about it right now. The heaviest activity with more in the way of thunder and lightning shifting over here to uh, northeastern Alabama. Let's go up to parts of uh, the Midwest. There's Omaha, Nebraska. This is rain. Mississippi State uh, not going to play tonight. Tom will have another update in just a few minutes from Omaha, but uh, it's been rained out up there today. That system, though, we're watching out there across the high plains. It's raining in Omaha now, but that system's going to drive some storms our way starting uh, tomorrow and tomorrow night. So let me just show you the big picture here. Really pretty tranquil tonight and tomorrow morning, but there's going to be a big batch of storms that somehow gets going and then shifts to the southeast later tonight. Now, the remnants of that tomorrow morning will be to our west, but that could kick off a boundary across our area during the day tomorrow, and that could disturb things and get us some showers and storms during the day. Now, uh, that would be round number one. Uh, we may st still see some uh, regeneration, if you will, uh, along this frontal boundary back to the west tomorrow evening and tomorrow night. That also could give us some strong to severe storms here as those complexes come our way. Uh, pretty nebulous at this point. All over the place are these model solutions, but we're just highlighting all of these areas in yellow, all of our viewing area basically for some severe weather chances here. Really tomorrow afternoon, late into tomorrow evening and tomorrow night. Damaging wind 
and some heavy downpours, the primary threats here with this setup. So we'll be watching that as it all comes together during the day Wednesday. For today and tonight, we're really looking at some tranquil conditions around 70 for lows tonight. These showers fade away here this evening and fairly tame overall. For our Wednesday, 72 at 7 o'clock, back into the upper 80s, the low 90s. Now, we may pop a few storms during the day, but that complex of stronger storms, if we're going to get it, may wait until the evening or tomorrow night. But just stay with us here as we fine-tune things over the next 12 to 18 hours here at WCBI and over at WCBI.com. Drier for this weekend, we're advertising low to mid-90s, plenty of humidity. The heat index will be over 100. A baseball postponed. Please say psych. More on the matchup with Mississippi State and Vanderbilt next in sports. WCBI sports coverage of the NCAA College World Series is brought to you in part by Monroe County Farm Bureau, Jackson Square Storage, Bill Cunningham, Attorney at Law, and Bank First, a better way to bank. WCBI Sports with Tom Evel is brought to you by your local Ford dealers. Go further. Welcome back here to Omaha, Nebraska, in the underbelly of the TD Ameritrade Park. Tom Ebel, Courtney Robb here. A little bit sad. We're not going to get Mississippi State baseball today, as it's if you haven't seen, the weather has been rainy, rainy, and more rainy. And Mississippi State Vanderbilt has been postponed to Wednesday. So, Courtney, another day to think about a matchup between two of the best teams in the SEC trying to go 2-0 and in the College World Series. Absolutely. And that game getting pushed back just because that Louisville-Auburn game is still TBD to be, determined. to be determined. Currently, they're trying to decide whether or not they might resume play at 9 p.m. We we're given some information that they have to let them know two hours in advance if they can resume. And so around 7, they should make a final decision whether or not because the players need another opportunity to be able to warm back up after a cool down with all the rain, especially considering. And so hopefully we'll be able to know. Otherwise, they'll play probably tomorrow morning and then Mississippi State following that 65 minutes later. Right. And so that game was 4-1 to one, Louisville when they went into rain delay at around 3.30 uh, this afternoon. So we'll see if Auburn and Louisville get in. But Mississippi State and Vanderbilt, two almost identical teams to the absolute barn burner of a Super Regional last year in Nashville. Mississippi State, uh, they talked a little bit earlier just on Monday about how this team's a little, the Vanderbilt team is almost the same, but a little more mature than the last time they faced. Right, and that was what Cole Gordon was saying, is that he remembers them being very similar, very similar rosters from last season as well. The only difference Gordon's saying is that they're a little bit more mature, but Mississippi State, a little bit more mature as well. A similar ro roster to last season. We're planning on seeing some of our favorites come back, of course. We're going to see Jake Mangum, Elijah McNamee, and Peyton Plumley. On the mound as well. That's right. It'll be Peyton Plumley taking on Kumar Rocker. Tanner Allen and Cole Gordon said on Monday, of course, that super regional, two walk offs and an extra inning ball game when Mississippi State won two games to three. Those two guys who experienced that super regional last year saying it was some of the most stressful baseball they've ever been a part of. Probably one of the best baseball series I've ever been a part of. So to get a chance, we get another crack at them here uh, tomorrow, so we just need to knock back in. I mean, that's really all it comes down to is us playing our, our brand of baseball. That was probably one of the most stressful moments I've ever had on the baseball field because you felt like, you know, we were up three runs in the night, they come back tight, and it was just like you wanted to just crawl off that field, it felt like, you know. But uh, we were able, like last year's team, a lot like this year's team, we were able to, you know, put it behind us. Like I said, have confidence that so we're going to win the game, and we know winning the game. I do think we're one of the best teams. I think Vanderbilt's one of the best teams. But out here in Omaha, there's eight great teams. I mean, we're looking up at Auburn and man, Edward Julian is so hot, and Stephen Williams, and and you see a team on a magical run. You look at Florida State, you know, and and then we know we played Arkansas, and so there's there's a lot of them out there. But I do think us and Bandy are, are very talented, and we've played well, and it's almost destined for the two of us to play. Chris Lamona saying it the best, Courtney. It's almost destiny that the Bulldogs and the Commodores will meet. Game time tomorrow, approximately 1 o'clock. Again, it just depends on what happens if that Auburn and Louisville game gets in tonight. If not, it gets shifted around a little bit. But, hey, one more win for Mississippi State, 2-0 and in the College World Series, three wins from a national championship. And those kind of stats, if they can pull off getting that game and the win in that second game, that would be huge for them. And 
it's hard to continue losing. You know, I know it sounds kind of cliche and maybe too simple, but it's hard to lose when you keep winning. Absolutely, and we'll find out tomorrow what will happen between two of the SEC's best. Reporting here inside TV Ameritrade Park, Tom Neville, Courtney Robb for WCBI Sports. We'll be back after the break. WCBI sports coverage of the NCAA College World Series is brought to you in part by Bill Russell Ford, Prestige Farms, OCH Regional Medical Center, Advanced Medicine, Compassionate Care, Home Store Furnishings in Starkville, and Visit Columbus, the city that has it all. All right, we have some more rain and storms in the forecast. Now, tomorrow we may see some pop-ups up during the day. If we're going to get some of those strong to severe storms, probably tomorrow evening, tomorrow night, we'll keep you updated on that. A rain chance is lower by the weekend, warm and steamy here. The heat index this weekend, guys, could be over 100 degrees. Ooh, oh, wow. Goodness. Summer is here. It's here. Um, I think of it. And I know you'll be watching those pop up thunderstorms. They can really pack a punch this time they of year. They did one yesterday in Starkville, did. Heavy sure. downpours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks so much for joining us, everybody. Have a good night.